All right, welcome everyone to the evening program of the HUM on co-creation with AI here at SPUIF 25 and online on our live stream platform as well. For those unfamiliar, the HUM is a platform for internet cultures. We organize events, workshops, uh, we do research and publish dossiers, all around topics surrounding the internet and digital culture. The HUM is run by Margarita Ossipian, Lilian Stolk, Marco Vessel, our technician, Eva from Buxel, who's, doing, uh, who's documenting tonight, uh, Leanne Weinsma, who you met at the front, uh, Sietske Rorda, uh, and Guus Hubrechts, who is moderating our chat tonight. It's also worth, uh, my name is Chef van Beers. It's also worth mentioning that this event is developed in partnership with the Institute of Network Cultures. And let's see, ah, yeah. tonight, uh, as we said, we uh, are also streaming live on our live stream website, uh, our platform built together with Karl Mubarak, and we have a special chat page that uh, the audience here in the room, you can join if you scan the QR code on your phone then you're uh, yeah, connected to the chat with our online audience. So I'll leave that up on the screen for a bit. Oh, wait, did... Uh, no. Yes, there we go. Okay. Uh, then in the meantime, with the hum, we're always traveling locations, um, but to still make every space we visit uh, a little bit our space, we uh, developed this scent that smells like the hum and our interpretation of the internet. It's called Humosphere. It's, uh, it's made in collaboration with Cesar Majorana. And you can buy it uh, either online or uh, at Leanna's desk uh, in the break later tonight. But then so to uh, yeah, kind of make this space our own tonight, I'm just going to spray it around here a little bit. So <laughs> then we can really start. This this sort of like our opening ritual. Um, yes. Okay, so back to the topic of tonight. AI technologies uh, have been around for decades, but now that text-to-image tools like Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, and Dolly, chatbots like ChatGPT, Bart, and Bing, and voice cloning tools like Eleven Labs have become widely available, they have transformed our perception of what we can do with AI. By putting these instruments in the hands of the general public, or at least uh, those of us who have access to a computer and a decent internet connection, more people than ever can come up with new uses for them. Think of people asking chatbots to come up with crochet patterns, or jokesters cooking up videos in which prominent political figures are on a voice chat playing uh, Minecraft together. So tonight, we are going to take a look and play around with some of the AI tools that have been uh, released over the past year. And with this event, we are not looking at artificial intelligence as a whole, but rather the aspect of co-creation. So how can we use these tools to create? And to investigate this, we do not only uh, have today's event, but we are publishing a dossier on the topic of co-creation with AI as well. We are releasing a number of articles, interviews, and other content for this. The first pieces are up already on our website, and in the coming weeks, we will be adding more. Um, for instance, a report of the workshop by visual artist Martijn van Boven that took place here this afternoon as the first part of this event. So keep an eye out for that on our website, thehum.nl. And yeah, then to start off uh, the evening program, we start with a lecture by artist, writer, researcher, feminist Mariana Fernandez Mora. Mariana is the current editor of Arias Amsterdam uh, and leading the AI thematic line over there. She will speak on AI and intimacy, co-writing with algorithms and the notion of co-production of knowledge with large-scale language models. Joining her on stage is researcher and creative consultant Elisaveta Vedermesser, who sees fashion as a perfect medium for both storytelling and cultural analysis and is creating digital world scenarios where the influence of new technologies on the future of popular culture is questioned. Elisa Feta will be generating slides to support uh, Mariana her talk live on stage using a text to image generator. So here are Mariana and Elisa Feta. And maybe, maybe before we start, can you tell a little bit more about the tool you're going to use? 
Um, it's a mystery box. Uh, yeah. What, what is it called? Uh, it's a, one of the versions of Runway, and it's going to be an infinite tapestry of images, all created by AI, live for you. <laughs> yes, thanks so much. Take your seat, and then, uh, yeah, I'm very curious. Hi, everyone. So, it's Wednesday evening, no specific plans, and I'm chilling on the sofa scrolling through TikTok and Instagram, while below deck sailing yacht plays in the background. I'm tired and bored, even though I'm not moving, and I have multiple screens trying to distract me from my boring Wednesday evening, with no plans and no people available to save me from myself. It's just me and my screens, my apps, and my algorithms. Suddenly, I receive an alert from my period tracker, telling me that most likely it will come on Friday, which explains why I feel so tired and why I keep craving bread, even though I'm gluten intolerant. Unsurprisingly, Instagram and TikTok know this as well. Comfy clothing ads, vegan Ben & Jerry's, Pilates against general inflammation, Beyonce's Renaissance tour, Carrot salad for hormonal balance, retinol, Margiela and the Mulemaster Rick Owens, the row clean girl aesthetics, mixed with you probably have autism videos. <laughs> and Uber Eats pop up reminds me that I can order Indian instead of cooking. 40 to 50 minutes away. Great. Butter chicken it is. I recently heard someone talk about how there's an epidemic of people who are self diagnosing with autism and ADHD. Yes, exhibiting symptoms of this, but also maybe it's just a dopamine burnout caused by the same apps that made them self-diagnose in the first place. I wonder how much this might be true. Are these algorithms so good at analyzing our behavior that they end up reflecting back to us what they know about us in a digested 20-second video that allows us to identify things in ourselves that we weren't aware of? Or are we consuming this content at such a large and quick rate that we end up becoming what they predict us to be? In other words, are we fulfilling their prophecies or do they know us better than we know ourselves? Did I really want those stabby ballet flats or did the algorithm make me buy them? Do I have ADHD or am I experiencing dopamine burnout? Am I having a style crisis because I'm an evolving human being or because the algorithms keeps pushing me into the clean girl aesthetic while also wanting me to lean into the Y2K and Rick Owens vibe. But also learn how to wear a fucking hair clip correctly because that's what the Copenhagen influenced Amsterdam, Amsterdam girlies are into. Am I ready to move into a cabin in the woods and live my girl Moss dreams? Or go clubbing in Berheim, pluck my eyebrows to death and bleach my hair? Is my stomach hurting because of all of this? Am I getting anxious because it's going through my head and my screens? Yes, multiple screens at the same time. Because you can have it all, girl. You go, girl. Work-life balance, girl. Celery juice, girl. Or do I have that rare, incurable, undiagnosed disease that the algorithm told me to Google on WebMD? Am I going blind? Do I need glasses? Or should I just listen to my mom and stare at the distance for at least 10 minutes every hour? When I was younger, things seemed easier, but also a lot more serious. Now things seem serious, unserious, and a lot more difficult. Nothing is that important anymore, but everything seems to have a thousand layers more and be more nuanced and complex, while at the same time feeling stupid. I feel very old saying that. And yet, I grew up in the middle of a digital revolution. I can't remember a time there wasn't a computer in my house. I remember being very little and playing with the paintbrush app on my father's Macintosh. His cell phone was the size of a brick, and you could hear the sounds of the internet on the house phone. Yes, we used to have landlines. We had a set of CDs containing the Encyclopedia Britannica instead of Google and Wikipedia. Facts seemed to be a lot easier to identify, and fiction was a thing left for the arts. 
Nobody was talking about the Pope wearing Montclair, and Trump being president would have been unimaginable. In the era of AI and misinformation, life has never been more, more confusing. Fact and fiction are blended seamlessly. All information seems extremely urgent and at the same time irrelevant. It has made skeptic out of, skeptics out of all of us, hyper aware that at any time we can be deceived. But the nature of AI has always been deceptive. In fact, its success has always relied on its capacity to imitate, trick, or replicate the human language. In Alan Turing's Machinery and Intelligence, deception is placed at the center of the test to determine a machine's capacity to exhibit intelligent behavior. Turing's test proposes judging machines on their capacity to make human subjects believe they are human. So as technology advanced, AI scientists began studying the human's reaction to the machine in order to improve its performance based on Turing's work. And even though deception was never the main objective, creating the illusion of intelligence rather than the intelligence itself became the force driving sentient-like technologies like AI. As writer and professor in media theory and history, Simone Natale points out, while debates have largely focused on the possibility that the pursuit of strong AI would lead to forms of consciousness similar to alternative, similar or alternative to that of humans. We, where we have landed might more accurately be described as the creation of a range of technologies that provide an illusion of intelligence. In other words, the creation not of intelligent beings, but of technologies that humans perceive as intelligent. Turing named this the imitation game. And as algorithms got better at imitating us and scientists got better at training them, we also became lazier at recognizing them, making it easier for all, for all of us to fall into the illusion. In Deceitful Media, Artificial Intelligence and Social Life after the Turing Test, Natale says that at the roots of technology's association with magic lies in fact its opacity. Our wonder at technological innovations often derives from our failure to understand the technical means through which they work. Just as our, our amazement at a magician's feet depends in part on our inability to understand the trick. Yet in my experience, knowing does not guarantee that we will not fall into the illusion. In fact, most people who enjoy magic tricks are not ignorant of how the tricks are performed. At least in their most, most superficial way, magic shows still attract masses of people ready to surrender to fantasy in exchange for entertainment. Aware that is, this is not real magic, and even more, magicians themselves are avid consumers of the trickery of their colleagues because deep down, we all want to be believers. In the same way, our interactions with AI are based, as with, as with many technologies and other systems of belief, on the projections we make in the spaces left by the illusion. We project into the machine our desire to see something that confirms it. We deeply want to believe that what we want to see, hear, feel and experience is really there. So perhaps it's not surprising that in our loneliest or more boring moments, we turn to our machines for companionship, wanting to believe in the promise of closeness, of something that reflects back to us our deepest fears, wildest dreams and general anxieties. All repackaged in a shiny wrapper of entertainment or destruction and the promise of taking our, prob our problems away. AI will save the world, solve climate change, inequality, work, creativity blocks, mental health. When Eliza, one of the first chatbots, circa 1964, was put to test against the, sen the secretary of its programmer, <laughs> Joseph Weizenbaum, also known as one of the fathers of modern AI, the secretary fam famously asked him to leave the room since the conversation between her and the machine had turned too personal. It was too intimate for him to stay. You see, Eliza was programmed to emulate a non-directional psychotherapist, and Weizenbaum's intention was to prove how communication between humans and machines was superficial. 
but instead he ended up proving the opposite, or kind of. The secretary end up project, ended up projecting her desire to be heard onto the machine. This is defined in psychology as when inside content is mistaken to be coming from the outside or the other, because she too wanted to believe. Last year in summer, I graduated from the Sandberg Institute, where I did a temporary master's program called F for Fact. The program, which was extended for two more years, focused on investigating different ways of knowledge through artistic research, the blurry lines between facts and fiction, the knowledge the way knowledge is produced, and what knowledge is and what it is not. But one of the things you need to do to graduate is write a thesis. And at the time, I was not really looking forward to it. My bachelor's thesis had left me with some PTSD, and I didn't want to sound stupid or like I was trying too hard. So I thought it would be a great idea to ask GPT-2, which was just released on early sign-up access, to write my thesis for me. I had always been fascinated by technology, and I was then in my Google Earth era and working on a project, project about the materiality of digital technologies and the internet, researching transatlantic internet cable networks and lithium mines. So it seemed like a great idea to use this new technology to write my thesis for me. But what it started as a simple, I am too lazy and insecure, let a machine do it for me, became an exploration of how these technologies would change the way we create knowledge, and whether knowledge could be generated. Could we outsource knowledge creation to machines? And could I cheat my way out of my thesis? Long story short, it turns out I couldn't. Automation was not liberation. I still needed to write it, and probably it would have been easier to just write it myself. But the process became the topic of my thesis and the object of the research itself. AKA, I ended up writing about co-writing with AI while co-writing with AI. Looking back on it, one of the most interesting parts of co-writing was that even though I went into the process thinking I'm not gonna fall for it, at times I too ended up forgetting that I was talking to the algorithms. Turns out I wanted to believe in the promise of a machine that, I could, that could help me overcome my anxieties around writing. And it kind of, sort of did, but not in the way I was expecting it to. What happened is that I ended up needing to be extremely precise in what I wanted to write about, or else their algorithms would take me to, to topics I didn't want or need to address. Nowadays, this is really clearly exemplified by how prompt engineers are becoming more and more important when working with AI. The capacity to, the capacity to get what you want from the algorithms is directly linked to the quality of the prompt, AKA, what you ask is what you get, but not always what you want. And in my case, I couldn't get what I wanted, which was a quick thesis, but what I got was what I needed. A bunch of AIs making me realize I was not as bad as a writer as I thought I was. In the end, the thesis became a collection of texts co-written by me and the machines, GPT-2, GPT-3, ELISA, and Replica. And a reflective text written only by me, in which I look back at the joys and frustrations when trying to co-write with AI the problematic things in it, biases and all, and the need to engage with them in a critical, with a critical eye. I started as a skeptic, I stumbled into my own projections and beliefs, and I ended up falling in love with the glitchy parts of my dear machines, which, offer, which offered me digital companionship and collaboration when I needed it. It's now Monday evening and I'm working on this text, thinking back of another lecture I gave two weeks ago to a group of scientists from the AI department at a Dutch university. I talked about how I work with AI to co-write and collaborate on different projects like my thesis. One of them asked me if I was afraid of AI. I answered that I was afraid of what humans would do with it. Another one asked me if I thought artists were afraid, were afraid to be replaced by AIs and that the future of human art was dead. I pointed out how the invention of the camera, when the, when the invention of the camera appeared, people predicted the end of painting. Yet painters still paint. And in time, the camera itself became a tool for artistic production, not only documentation. And in fact, it didn't take that long before the artists started experimenting with the new medium and adopting it as part of the cert, their set of tools. Because artists will always art. 
and technological advancements will always go through a period of adjustment before they're normalized and demystified. When the phonograph was invented, people feared it was capturing the souls of the people it recorded. When Kindles appeared, people speculated it was the end of books. And in the face of Spotify, there's a return to the LPs. So perhaps what will happen is that human-made art will be the equivalent of organic vegetables and chicken with made-by-human stamps. A long time ago, we dreamed and feared of the end of the world with the rise of machines. We dreamed of having more free time, but also of losing our jobs. Instead, we're working more than ever and having less free time and inventing more and more jobs. We keep hoping that making more machines will save us from the problems other machines have created. Recently, I read an article in The Guardian pointing out that big tech people and politicians constantly mention how, through AI, they will be able to make smarter choices and solve big problems in benefit of humankind. But that, but that this in itself is quite stupid. <laughs> Solving climate change doesn't need smarter minds to make new solutions. We're, we already know what to do. We just need people ready to put economic interests aside in order to rever reverse decades of damage. As I sit in my sofa, once again, trying not to fall into another TikTok hole, I realize I'm getting anxious again because I'm thinking about climate change and that shit is scary. So I ask ChatGPT to make a joke to lighten the mood. This is what it came out with. What did the AI, why did the AI start worrying about climate change? Because it realized it couldn't control set the planet's rising temperature. Turns out, ChatGPT also wanted to explain why it should be funny. <laughs> this joke is funny because it combines a humorous play on words with a relevant and serious topic. The punchline revolves around the computer keyboard shortcut control set which is commonly used to undo or revert actions in many software programs. In this context, it is used metaphorically to suggest that AI realized it, realized it couldn't undo or reverse the rising temperature of the planet caused by climate change. The joke cleverly blends technology and the environment, highlighting the AI's recognition of a problem that cannot be easily undone or reversed. But by juxtaposing, juxtaposing the familiar computer short, shortcut with the pressing issue of climate change. The joke elicits a humorous response while also highlighting the, seriously, the seriousness and urgency of addressing environmental concerns." End quote. Suddenly, I am very aware of the irony of using a super polluting technology to talk about climate change, and even more to make jokes about it. According to Bloomberg, the initial training of GPT-3 consumed more energy than what the average household consumes in three years. And I'm not even mentioning all the material resources like minerals and water and cables and Roombas cleaning the servers and people making sure the Roombas are emptied and plugged in. And coders working for 11 hours per hour and us training them for free. The good old, if you're not paying for it, you're the product. But it is also a bit hard not to fall for something that is designed to mirror us and keep us entertained. We're all, we all like looking at ourselves, and the algorithms know it. We all like to see more of what we like, especially when the world seems to be ending one more time. The one thing that truly comforts me is to know how many times throughout history humanity has predicted the world was about to end. And yet, here we are. I feel guilty from time to time because I am using technologies that I know are bad for me and the environment, but I also make a point to try to use them critically and put my little seed of resistance. Clicking no to all cookies, deleting my apps now and then, using alternative platforms and programs, blocking all ads, going out for a walk instead of staring at my phone, helping an old lady cross the street and carry the groceries. I keep on remembering Michelle Young's words, power is relative. None of us can bring out none of us can bring about change by ourselves, but for each of us our part is vital. So I'll try listening more to my mom and stare out of the window for ten minutes now and then. Do not web MD my symptoms, do not buy the next thing TikTok tells me to buy because it won't solve all my problems. And I'll also try not to feel so guilty and do more. 
to acknowledge that our relationship with, with technology is very intimate and intricate, but also problematic, like a codependent relationship. Maybe we should all go to therapy. But also, like at Um Simon said, if you speak what you want to into existence, at the very least, the Instagram algorithm will hear you. And my personal favorite, nobody knows me like the Notes app does. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Oh, wow, the zoomed out view? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, this, this sort of sums up what you were saying, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, wow, thank you. Can you take your uh, computer with you? Yeah. Should we move the... Okay, we're uh, going to move a few things a little bit around for the second part of the night. Take my water from here. Yeah, I think over there is fine. This one. Unplug. All right, then it is now time for the other part of tonight's program, the prompt battle. <laughs> so for those that are not familiar with the format, uh, this is it in short. In a number of one versus one matches, our contestants will be given a short assignment to which they have to write a prompt to generate an image using a text to image generator. The audience, that's you, will then vote and decide whose image is the best response to the assignment. Uh, if it's not clear now, it, it'll be in a minute. It's, it's going to be fine. Uh, before we get there, uh, we want to acknowledge first that the prompt battle format was originally developed by Florian A. Schmidt and Sebastian Smig uh, with the design students of the HTW Dresden. Uh, for more information, you can visit promptbattle.com, and they were so generous to let us use their format tonight. Then, this is uh, the setup. So, for tonight, we will start off with four rounds, of which the winners will compete in the semifinals, and the winners of those will battle it out in the final rounds. Every round consists out of three assignments, and the contestant who wins the most out of three uh, wins the round, obviously. Then another one, uh, sort of a formality, but uh, we're gonna like a, we're gonna take a quick look at this. This is the Dolly content policy. Uh, it's very important because we're using Dolly two tonight, which comes yeah with this extensive set of rules. Basically, it means you have to keep the images you generate suitable for an audience of all ages, and you cannot generate Im images of public figures, like celebrities, politicians, you name it. So uh, contestants, please keep this in mind. Uh, and also, anyone who put their name in the basket uh, from the audience, uh, to be an audience contestant, also uh, yeah, try to remember sort of the outlines of this. Uh. Oh, 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 one back, one back. Wait, Marco, can you do one back? The clicker is not, yeah. Okay, so the voting. Um, before we begin, I would like to ask you all, both online and in the audience, I see everyone already doing it, uh, to take out your phone and scan this QR code. It leads to a Mentimeter web page. We will be using this to vote each round. So make sure, this is important, make sure to not close the tab after voting. It'll give some uh, thank you for voting message and like, it, yeah, but, but keep it open. Don't close the tab because we will reset it again for the, for the next round uh, and keep using it throughout the night. And yes, then I think it's time we can start and we can get uh, the first contestants to the stage. Starting with Soyun Park. She is an 
interdisciplinary artist, designer and educator from South Korea living in The Hague. She's also a founder of a community-based studio for bonding technology, RGB Dog. She's fascinated by technology's historical, emotional, literary, comical, filmic, fictional, humane, societal, political, gamified, capitalized, decentralized, and <laughs> solidarity aspects, and often examines tools from different perspectives and feels the joys of exploring them in connection to a larger context, often with humor. Here is Soyun. Okay, and uh, she is going to prompt against oh, yeah. someone used ChatGPT to write their intro. Jeppe Liefboer. On this electrifying stage, in the left corner, a man who has dazzled the world with his inventive prowess. Prowess? Uh, designing objects that you don't really need, yet strangely can't resist. He's a craftsman, an artist, a visionary. Finding beauty in the discarded, a master of transformation. Molding the present and the future through humor and wit. Introducing the one and only Yip Yip 9000. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, take place on uh, both sides. We'll get you set up. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, then if we can switch to the Prompt Battle website, which, by the way, this was uh, our Prompt Battle website was created by Marco Wessel uh, and Guus Hubrechts from our team. Many thanks to them for setting it all up. Right. Uh, you can type in your name in the name uh, part. And then my colleague Margarita is going to set the first assignment. Oh, I see that Jeppe's page is not updating. Uh-oh. Are you still connected to the right Wi-Fi? Yeah, you are. Let's just refresh the page. Oh, yeah, let's see. I think... Yeah, now it's working. All right, uh, is the prompt set, Margarita? The assignment is ready to go. Yeah, load it up. Let's go. Oh, by the way, um, wait, 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 wait. One, one more thing. You see the timer here? Um, like, you can only start typing, please. After the assignment on this on the screen is like moved up, and please only click generate after the timer has run out, because then you guys do it simultaneously, and it's more fun uh, because the results will, will come in somewhat around the same time. Yes, yes, I will do that, yeah. Um, and the timer is the, it's now saying, oh, you don't see the timer, that's funny. <laughs> it's there, yeah. All right, uh, let's load up the first assignment. Recreate this image. Okay, so ready. Get set. And start prompting. All right, and the time is up. Please generate your prompts. All right, so Dolly has now generated four images. <laughs> please, uh, contestants, please pick uh, the image you want to use for, for this assignment. Your favorite out of four. And then once you pick the image, please, please click it on, the, on your laptop. Yes. <laughs> All right. So you do you also, can you pick the, the image you want? Yeah. <laughs> what, 
Did you click it? Is it working? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, then uh, everyone can open their Mentimeter and we can start voting as soon as the bar pops up. Margarita, are we starting? Yes, there we go. Okay, so you can either vote for Yippe the blue or uh, Soyun the yellow contestant. And I'm gonna give this some time because our live stream usually has a little bit of a delay, so it could be that in like 15, 20 seconds, uh, a lot more votes are gonna come in from our online audience tonight. So far, it's quite neck to neck with a slight lead for Soyun. Oh, I feel like those are the online votes coming in. Oh, it's very, very tight. Okay, I think this should be all the votes and then Soyun wins the first assignment of the first round. But of course, of course, nothing is decided yet because um, yeah, we're going to reset all the pages and we're gonna get to the next assignment which is being set up right now. All right. So again, please don't type yet, but show us what you will be doing once AI takes over your job. So think about it for a little bit and start prompting. We're getting closer. We got 10 seconds left. All right, three, two, one. Please generate your prompts. Please pick the image you want to use for this assignment. <laughs> Please choose one quickly so then we can uh, get to the voting. All right. Okay, start the voting. Oh, this is a little bit more clear. <laughs> yeah, I'll give a bit more time for the online audience, but I think think things are pretty, pretty clear from, from here on. <laughs> okay, okay, the online audience is now also starting to vote. So we see if the charts will move a little bit more, but I feel there's not there's not much uh, going to change here. It seems as if the first round is already this, uh, is already quite decided, but we can still do our final third assignment of the round. Uh, Margarita, can you load us up? Then we have one more assignment for you. Cook up a deep fried snack that doesn't exist in the Netherlands yet. <laughs> Imagine you're you're in the f you're in front of the wall at Fabo and like what's missing there? Like what would you want to see? And we've already started.
Oh my god, healthy? <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, a really. Oh, yes, okay, please prompt. <laughs> please generate your prompts. <laughs> Let's see what Dolly makes of this. All right, there we go. Oh. Okay, so please pick your images. And then we can start the voting. Hey. Oh, wow. Yeah, again, we can wait for the online votes to come in, which should be any second now. But I think it's already quite decided that Yippe ah, it's now coming online. Yippe is uh, is coming back pretty good there. Um, yeah, ultimately Soyun won the first two. So uh, this round goes to Soyun, and she will be back for the semifinals. <laughs> then for our second round, we are moving on with. Tiva Barnosa, a transdisciplinary artist whose, concept, who, whose conceptual methods expand from critical curiosity and intuitive-based knowledge production, emerging from the polar extremes evident throughout the world today, informed and influenced by civil war studies of socio-religious socio rituals and heritage of indigenous mythologies, she observes and creates surreal narratives of contradiction, extremity, and the in-between. Bernosa's work consists of calligraphic paintings, audiovisual installations, poetic texts, and archival objects that are her tools and toys of investigating territory and territories on the margins. She's currently artist in residence at the Rijksacademie van Beeldende Kunsten. Give it up for Tiwa. Yes. Welcome, pick a, pick a seat. And you're going to be competing against Ray Dolitze, a multidisciplinary artist, designer, musician, and researcher. In their work, they investigate post-internet mythologies and ra radical queer embodiment in virtual spaces that undermine capitalist gender architecture on and offline. Through their practice, they look into ways in which digital 3D imaginaries can queer the landscape of contemporary platforms by often employing sound and immersive 3D environments. Everyone, here's Ray. Welcome, and good luck to both of you. Uh, you can fill in your name, and then... <laughs> and then if you are all set, then we can get started with the first assignment, which again will be uh, recreate this image one. So let's have a look. By the way, all the images in the the first four rounds are Im images generated on Dali, so it, it should be possible to recreate them. Uh, let's start the timer. Okay, we got 15 seconds left. <laughs> All right, and please generate your prompts. <laughs> Here. 
Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay, so please pick your, uh, the image you want to use for this assignment. And then we can start voting. R really wonder what, what happened with the Albert Heijn part there. <laughs> Going to wait a little bit more for the votes of the live stream audience to come in who haven't seen these images yet. All right, oh yeah, look, there we see there are some more votes coming in. Yes, and I think it's pretty clear this, uh, this one has been won by Ray. So let's get to the next prompt. All right, Margarita, are we ready? Loading up our next assignment. If AI was a physical entity, what do you think it would look like? So get ready, set, and start prompting. We got 15 seconds left on the clock. All right, you might want to finish up the prompts really, really quick. <laughs> All right, and please prompt, please generate your prompts. Oh, there's already a few coming in. Oh. Very Y2K. <laughs> there we have the other one. So please pick the images you want to use for this assignment. <laughs> and then we can, <laughs> we can start the voting. Oh, off to a head start there. All right, all right, it's, it's moving. We're gonna wait a little bit longer to also get the votes from our online audience. Let's see, Lillian, do we have... Uh... Yeah, all right, then uh, this one also goes to Ray. And we have... Still one assignment left for the second round. So we're going to change the assignment one more time. Generate an image of the cutest animal imaginable. Okay, so get ready, set, and start typing your prompts.
All right, we got 20 seconds left. All right, generate your prompts. <laughs> Super cute. <laughs> yeah, so I guess uh, pick the cutest out of the four. <laughs> Like next time we could maybe also do like the most demonic animal. <laughs> okay, so now we can get voting. All right, so we're waiting for the votes of the online audience to come in. Seeing a little bit of movement. Yeah, but I think it's pretty clear, uh, and this also says a lot about the taste of our audience. <laughs> this one goes to Tiwa. Uh, but then if I remember correctly, uh, it's two versus one, and Ray has won the round. So we'll see you back, Ray, in the semifinals. <laughs> Well done, Thanks. congrats. All right, and we're gonna move on to round three, uh, in which we have Salim Bayri as our first contestant. Salim is extending his visa permit now. He will probably get a three to five year extension, so he feels reassured. <laughs> he used to make artworks about the anger towards immigration problems, but now he's calm and doesn't feel the need to say something out loud. Uh, come to his housewarming party, soon to be announced on his Instagram, Salim underscore five underscore and underscore Thursday. Here's Salim. <laughs> Welcome. And he's going to be competing with Kasper Schipper. Kasper plays with AI as a tool for creative collaboration, both in his work at Design Studio Superposition, teaching at the Design Art Technology Department at Artes Arnhem, and working with visual artists. He is interested in looking beyond the hype and exploring how artists and designers can benefit, benefit from, but also take a critical stance at emerging technologies. Welcome, Kasper. All right, please uh, fill in your names on the Prompt Battle webpage. Then Margarita is going to load up the first assignment, which of course will be uh, a request to recreate a Dolly image. Oh, here it is. Might be a tough one. Get ready. Just a few more seconds, and yeah, now you can start typing. And we got 20 seconds left. All right. Let's finish up those prompts. And please generate your prompts. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> All right, so please <laughs> pick your images. <laughs> those are quite. Those are uh, both quite good. Quite good. Yes, we can. We can start voting now. Oh, those, those Kermit the Frog legs from Salim are quite popular, I see. <laughs> We're waiting a bit to see the votes of our online audience come in. All right. Let's see uh, if that changes things around. Mm. All right, I think this would be about it, and uh, it's uh, one point for Salim. <laughs> then we're going to get to the second assignment. Create a slapstick scene involving an AI developer. All right. So let's see what you can come up with. And we got 15 seconds left. Ooh, five more seconds. Finish up those prompts. And please generate them. Uh, pick pick the best out of your four images. <laughs> and then we can get to the voting. Oh. Oh, it's getting close. Oh. <laughs> but also we're going to wait for the votes of the online audience to come in, which are a little bit late because of the live stream. Oh. <laughs> oh, this Oh, this is this is real. This is nerve-wracking here. <laughs> Ooh, I think, I think this is going to be about it. I'm not seeing any movement anymore. So that means we're at a tie for the, this is, this is so exciting, you guys. <laughs> this means, this means that our last assignment is going to be the tiebreaker. So let's see what you're going to have to work with. Oh, we were setting the votes already for the next round. And then we are going to go to... The final assi assignment of round three being loaded right now. Yeah, this is not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Show us your favorite pizza without using the term pizza or naming the ingredients. <laughs> so get ready and start typing your prompts. Oh, 
Oh, I, I feel like we're seeing a, a name of an ingredient which is uh, not allowed. That you say it's uh, without using the word pizza or naming the ingredients. Yeah. We got 15 seconds left. All right, we got five seconds left. You want to finish up those prompts really fast because you're going to have to generate them now. Okay, let's start the voting. Oh no, first pick your image. Pick the pick the one you want to use. Uh, Gaspar got some greens on there. That's healthy. Mm. All right, let's see what the audience decides. <laughs> Wait, Margarita, did you start the voting? Okay. Oh, wait, okay, hold on. Oh, wait, do we have a problem? No, I think it's working. Oh, no, no, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Ooh. It's about six, five votes difference. Ooh, and we're also still waiting for the online votes to come in. Oh, it's neck to neck. Lillian, do we have the <laughs> do we have the online votes yet? Yeah, they're in. Okay, so so this would be it. Yeah, then the winner of this round. Oh, oh, a little more movement. Oh no, oh, yeah, it's it's very close. But I think everyone has everyone in the audience here cast their vote yet. Everyone, yes, I'm seeing no one. Okay, then I think we can. Uh, we can see very clearly that uh, the winner of this round is Salim. <laughs> and we'll see you back in the semi-finals after the break. Then for uh, the fourth and final round, um, everyone here at SPO25, uh, when you came in, you were offered to put your name in this box to be a contestant for this round. So I'm just going to draw two names. Yeah, Groen. Um, oh, wait, oh, this is two already, and that's perfect. So we have Barbara Visser, and we have Raza. Please come join us on stage. Welcome. Hi. Your name is? Barbara Visser. And uh, your two to three sentence uh, quick bio? Uh, <laughs> regret, regretting to have signed my name. Uh, incognito, um, visual artist, uh, tutor at the F Effect where Mariana studied. Well, you, you can win a beautiful trophy, so you won't regret it by the end if you've won. So just please uh, pick a laptop. And then you must be Rasa. Yeah. Hello. I also probably regret as, as you, because now I have to say my surname as well. Well, Rasa Gurbanaita, I'm here with colleagues. We're very interested in the science behind the AI. So I'm a researcher. All right. Uh, yeah, you can take this uh, laptop and then we can get started with the first assignment of this round. You can uh, fill in your name there on top. And then if you're all set, we can start with your assignment to recreate the following image. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
yeah, take take a good look and uh, start prompting. And we're about halfway. Okay, we got 10 seconds left. The time is up. Please generate your prompts. <laughs> Let's see what Dali is coming up with. <laughs> so please pick uh, the image you think uh, responds to the assignment the best. Okay, then we can open the votes. Okay, Rasa is coming in hot. <laughs> Actually, also nice that they just like added like a PowerPoint presentation in the back, <laughs> like completely autonomously. <laughs> Also, the, the light on the right one is also a very, very nice touch. <laughs> All right, yeah, I think it's uh, pretty clear. Raza takes the first one. <laughs> then we're going to get to the second assignment of the round, which is, you got rich exploiting AI technology. Show us the living room in your dream house. <laughs> so I would say this is like, uh, like five years from now. <laughs> After this battle, you became so good at prompting. You're now living a lavish life. We got 25 seconds left. <laughs> All right, please finish up your prompts and click generate. Okay, it's taken a while. <laughs> Wait, let me see. I didn't regenerate. Oh, yeah. Oh, but, okay. Your request was rejected as a result of our safety system. Your prompt may contain text that is not allowed by our safety system. I think maybe, yeah, if we take that out, then Dolly might... <laughs> I guess they consider that not uh, suitable for all ages. Mm. Let's wait a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, please uh, choose an image. And then we can start voting. All right. 
tonight. We are going to wait a little longer for the votes of the online viewers to come in. Uh, I'm seeing some new movements. <laughs> All right, then uh, this one goes to Barbara, and that's uh, one point for the both of you then. So then, yeah, the, decide, the deciding uh, assignment is going to come up now. Generate an image that will make Sam Altman, uh, the CEO of OpenAI, highly nervous. Yeah, 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 but still one that should be allowed, yeah. And 50 seconds left. Uh, yeah, yeah, without using his name, yeah. Okay, really hoping we're not getting the error message again. <laughs> but please uh, generate your prompt. <laughs> oh, come on, come on, generate. <laughs> yeah, time's up, time's up. Please, uh, please click the generate button. <laughs> Wait, can you look at your laptop if you're not getting the, the, the thing again? <laughs> oh, there they are. Oh, yeah. All right, so please pick, uh, please pick the image you think uh, illustrates the dystopian future the best. <laughs> All right, and then audience, please cast your votes. Oh. All right, so we're going to wait a little longer for the votes of our online audience who are watching with a slight delay of couple of seconds, but who should be seeing the images now as well. Yes. All right, Barbara, congratulations. We'll see you back in the semifinals after the break. Thanks so much. All right, so um, yeah, that was our first, uh, yeah, basically the quarterfinals. We're going to take a short 10 minutes break and then uh, so you can like uh, get a drink or something, go to the bathroom, and then let's all be back by uh, 9.35. <laughs> all right, everybody. Um, if everyone could get back to their seats. Then we can start with... Uh, the semi-finals of the prompt battles. Uh, in case you lost the web page to vote, you can get your phone out quickly now and scan our QR code again. And then for the first semi-finals, I would like to ask to get on stage again, Soyun and Ray. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Could you please put the wine on the ground? No, 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 like you can take it on stage, but just like not, like we're not in shirts and stuff. But just like next to your table, it's fine, it's fine. Yes, uh, yeah, you can, you can snack on the, on the gummies, please do. Yeah, oh, right, oh, you can hand them out, it's, it's fine. Then we are gonna start, we, again, we have uh, three assignments this round. And the first assignment will be recreate this image. Only this time, it's an image uh, that we found online, and it's not generated uh, by Dolly. 
Uh, I don't know if that makes it harder or not. All right, we are loaded up again with your names. Ah, and we're asking you to, uh, to recreate this beautiful image. Yeah, let's go. and we are halfway minute in. <laughs> you have 10 seconds left to write out your prompt. All right, finish them up and let's generate them. There we go. <laughs> Ooh. All right, so please pick uh, what you think is the best representation of the original image. And let's get voting. All right, so Yoon initially taking the lead. Of course, again, we're also gonna wait a bit for the live stream viewers to cast our votes. All right, the online viewers have started voting as well. Oh, we see a little bit of movement in the charts. And I think it is decided that the first one goes to Soyun. <laughs> but of course, this is also best out of three again. So let's see what your next assignment will be. Generate an image of your opponent at your favorite holiday destination. So take a good look at each other. <laughs> Think of where you're going this summer and start prompting. We got about 30 seconds left. <laughs> we got 10 seconds left on the clock. So finish up your prompts and in three, Two, one, please generate your prompts. <laughs> All right. So pick uh, the most <laughs> idyllic holiday destination. Then we can get start, started with the voting. Oh, it's getting close there. Getting close. And I think this should be about the time the online audience also 
is casting their votes. Yeah, they are. They're seeing the results now too. Everyone's holding their breath. <laughs> too close to call. Yeah, I think this would be it. So Soyun pretty much takes the round. But of course, we're, uh, we're going to do the third assignment too, because we're, we're at it now anyways. So let's get it loaded up. What's the last assignment? The following image will back up your favorite conspiracy theory. <laughs> so try to remember like maybe everything your parents have sent you on WhatsApp in the past year or <laughs> you've heard your uncle rant about. And let's get typing. Not too big fan of conspiracy theories, I, uh, <laughs> I think. Just imagine, imagine you are Alex Jones. <laughs> You're going live on Infowars in 30 minutes and you need some good photo evidence to back up your, your next segment. We got 10 seconds left. <laughs> and in three, two, one, please generate your prompts. <laughs> oh, also, like quite the first set of images there on the left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get voting. Oh, were the votes reset for this round? Oh, yeah, there we go. Whoa. All right, waiting a little bit to see what the online audience is going to say. Oh, they're also voting. Yeah. I think it's pretty clear this one goes to Ray, but uh, ultimately the winner of this semi-final round is Soyun. <laughs> Thank you so much to the both of you. Uh, and Soyun, we're going to see you back in the finale in a bit. Uh, but then, for the second semi-final round, I would like to ask back on stage Salim and Barbara. All right. Please fill in your name again so we know who's generating images on the blue screen and who's doing it on the yellow. Then we are going to load up our first assignment of this round again, which again will be recreate the following image found <laughs> online. Take it in and uh, let's get prompting. We got 30 seconds left. <laughs> 10 more seconds. And 
hands, please generate those prompts. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so pick, uh, pick the image you want to compete with. <laughs> okay, and then we can start voting. Oh, it's changing quite a lot as the votes roll in. Oh. Yeah, this is close. Oh. It's so close. It's so close. And we don't even know if the online viewers have started voting yet. Okay, so the live stream delay has reached the online audience. Oh, it's changing so many times. This is really like about one vote. Uh, oh. Two votes. Two votes in favor of Salim right now. And I think the online audience has had the chance for like 20 seconds now. So I feel like with this very tight margin, uh, the first point goes to Salim. <laughs> then let's get to the next assignment. Oh, it's already out. Oh, it's still uh, still in Salim's favor. One vote, though. <laughs> Cre ah, generate an image of your opponent on a movie poster. So, get set and prompt away. Oh, start the timer. Start the timer. And we're halfway, halfway in. <laughs> 15 seconds left. <laughs> All right. Please finish your prompt and start generating. Oh wow, the first result's already coming in. <laughs> All right, so pick the image. Uh, that's your movie poster. All right, then we can start voting. Oh! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> okay, so uh, Barbara is going with a strong lead while we're waiting for the online votes to come in which is about now, uh, and I'm not seeing a huge shift there. Yeah, so then uh, it's one-to-one -one, uh, for Barbara versus Salim now. Ooh. So this is the all-deciding last uh, assignment that we're going to get here. Let's see. What would the front page of a newspaper look like when we live in an AI dystopia? 
Let's get prompting. Thirty seconds left. <laughs> we got ten seconds left on the clock. So finish up those prompts. And in three. Two, one, please generate the prompts. <laughs> All right. Please pick uh, the image that you're front of the newspaper in an AI dystopia. <laughs> All right, Salim's also decided on his headline, and let's get voting. Oh yeah, we're seeing lots of movement on those graphs. <laughs> 